Hey folks, David Stewart here. Time for an important book review. The book is called Corporate Cancer. It's by Vox Day. This is maybe an auxiliary companion piece to some of his other nonfiction books, including SJW's Always Lie and SJW's Always Double Down. The focus of this book is around what he calls convergence. This is a term that I've used on the show. Others in my sphere have talked about the convergence of a company towards leftism or towards having a social justice outlook. He explains in this book how this happens, and he explains in this book what to do about it to try to uh, prevent it and maybe counteract it. Uh, so this is a, a good book. I do like it a lot. It's a fairly quick read. I'm not sure how, how long it is exactly. It might be that I was just so interested in reading it. I read it in a single day, but I enjoyed the read and I found it informative uh, and interesting. Uh, Vox has a great ability to not only communicate his ideas very clearly and very in a very easy to understand way, but also to provide a lot of really what I call key examples. Um, there's two different ways to back up your your points. One is with like large sets of data. But when you're talking about the convergence of a company, this is not something that shows up on a graph. So the key examples are really, really useful. Um, he uses Star Wars as an example. He uses um, a number of companies such as T-Mobile and explains how they've gone through a corporate transition from being a corporation which is dedicated towards its purpose. That's you create a corporation like a communications corporation to provide communications to people, you know, sell them phone service into something that the core purpose of the company is kind of auxiliary to the message or mission of social justice. And I don't want to give away all of the content of the book. And indeed, I couldn't in a short video. So I do recommend you buy it. But um, there, there's a, a process that that this goes through. And the first thing that happens is that you have a corporation that's reasonably successful and you get people coming out of the college sphere where social justice is the sort of religion in, in college into corporations. And they start first in a couple of places. And he mentioned specifically HR, human resources and marketing. And these are the places that are attractive to SJWs. Um, and the reason he gives, and I think it's a valid reason, is because it negates some of the things that they have as weaknesses, you know, the fact that they may not be great programmers or something like that. They're they're lower on the merit scale, but also is attracted to them because it's an ability to influence or control other people without having to create anything of value in order to do that. So in human resources, once you're in human resources, you can create things like codes of conduct, which will ban certain kinds of speech or get you fired for, say, wearing a Make America Great Again hat or something like that. Uh, this is a really, really important entry point into a corporation because once they're in that, they can start to dictate not only who's hired, which means they can bring in more people that are like them, but also the people who are there, what they can and can't do and what they can and can't say. And if the human resources department grows enough, as is the case in a lot of large corporations, they can start to dictate policy of where the company is going. And he outlines this not only by giving these key examples, but also giving a lot of justification from, I guess, HR HR focused people or speakers. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly who he was quoting to to make this point, but you know their their goal of HR is to help direct the company's direction. Well, any competent you know corporate minded person would say that HR's HR's job is to you know keep us out of lawsuits and things like that. And part of the the loss of the the goal of whatever the SGW is converging is that the HR departments have all of these endless, you know, sexual harassment trainings, racial sensitivity trainings, um, an attempt to put their ideology really front and center inside the corporation. And it still doesn't prevent lawsuits. So it still is not doing its core function. That's a point that he makes very well, I think. Um, but that's why they're attracted to HR. Likewise, marketing, you're facing out the world. So if you are in marketing, you have a chance to really... Uh, put forth your values in the marketing materials. You are the face of the company and that means that you get to put out the information and messages you want. So if you're in marketing, you could put out an ad that say, um, 
decries masculinity when you're trying to sell razors to men. And that is something that you think is doing, it's a moral good. And that's another another thing with this, that uh, the social justice warrior really does view themselves as a warrior doing what is morally correct. So it's morally correct to put out an ad which insults the customer base of your company because they need to hear the message about how bad and wicked they are for being masculine or something like that. So it's a, it's a moral imperative. And of course, moral imperatives trump financial ones, which means that if you have a converged marketing department, you are going to end up with a lot of messaging toward the left uh, and messaging against potentially against your customer base um, with a moral justification for it. Uh, so those are the, the places where it, it, it begins. And so this is something that you can see right now in a whole lot of different uh, publicly facing companies is the marketing department. And I think that's also because you know people who are in marketing, you end up with a lot of creative people and people who major in the creative studies in the colleges also tend to be a little bit more on the left side as well. And then that's where it starts. And he goes through uh, all the stages and he does a great job of, I've talked about this in the nonfiction stream, using sets of three and sets of five to categorize your information so it's easy to remember. So he has, you know, the five stages of convergence and describes them from, you know, no convergence all the way up to fully converged, meaning every part of the company is dedicated towards the social justice mission and the company is no longer serving its core function directly, maybe indirectly or just not as well as it would if it weren't fully converged. And he then immediately equates that to five stages of cancer, starting with stage zero, which would be like an abnormal cell, all the way up to stage four, metastasitic cancer, which has a low survival rate and will probably um, probably kill the patient. Now, um, so this book does a really good job of explaining that. The first half of the book really is talking about the ideas and giving some key examples. The second half of the book is really showing a lot of more real world examples. It's going deeper into the actual physical examples that we have to, to generate his ideas. And depending on what you're more interested in, you may find the first half of the book more interesting than the second half of the book. I find the second half of the book still very, very interesting because of the examples and going deep in the examples I think is is interesting. The only negative thing, in fact, that I'd say about the second half of the book is that there's a big portion which is redacted that has to do with Vox's lawsuit against Indiegogo. And it's going to be redacted till 2021. And he put that in there. And I'm not sure why he put that in there, but it definitely has an effect on me because I now really want to know what he's going to post about this lawsuit and how they came to an agreement with Indiegogo. But Indiegogo is an example of a converged company. And so one of the another thing that uh, I've talked about on the channel before that you'll find in this book uh, if you choose to read it is the fact that as you get more com more company employees that are dedicated to their social justice mission, some of them may act unilaterally or in a rogue fashion. Indeed, this has happened to some of my friends recently, having books banned and disappeared off of Amazon right before they go live for pre-orders. Uh, basically, what what happens is a rogue employee doesn't like that the book is there. He deletes it, and then that puts you know the author in a bad position where they have to figure out how to get it back. They you know you have to go back and forth with uh, with support. This happened to the entire uh, catalog of Castellia House, which is Vox Day's publishing company. So it happened to all the authors that have all of their books there. They were all disappeared. Their account was revoked. And they also told them that they weren't going to pay them back royalties, which is uh, which was which was a, a problematic thing. And he actually points to that as, as, as an example of how you know that uh, wasn't some algorithm that determined it. And uh, they got their account back rather quickly. But this is a danger. And I've made this point before is that the corporation as a as an entity is like a ring of power. And because it's it's not a governmental organization, but it has power over people's lives. You know, you control their phone service or their entertainment. Uh, you have an ability to affect the way they think because you, you know, the company's making movies, for example. So this attracts people who want to really uh, be radical. It attracts them because they don't have to actually gain an elected office. Uh, they don't have to actually produce a product on their own, which people like and, and therefore is influential. They simply go into the corporation and take control of a product that somebody else has already established. Somebody else has already put the capital and time into to develop fully. And then once they take control of that product, 
then they're able to execute their mission. Uh, they're able to do their morally justified social justice work. So that's stuff that I all found very, very uh, it resonated with me a lot. It's things I've talked about on the channel. And I think it's things that are worthy of your attention. Now, if you are one of those people that's like Vox Man bad, Vox Day is a bad guy, let me tell you that you do not have to agree with all of his politics to understand the points that he makes. And this is going to be true whether you're looking at this book or SJW's Always Lie and SJW's Always Double Down. Those two books I also do recommend uh, for being able to anticipate, say, like Twitter mobs and things like that, which I... I think is important for, for pretty much everyone at this point in time. So um, you can check those out. You don't have to like Vox Day or you don't have to agree with his politics to know that his writing is is correct there. You don't have to be a hard right guy to see that SGW infestation of your company, the convergence, will reduce the profitability of it and will harm it as well. So interesting book and coming from an interesting perspective from an interesting guy. Uh, I do recommend it. Check it out. It's a quick read and uh, I think a pretty fun and interesting read as well. So thanks so much and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, my newest book, fiction, non nonfiction. A City of Silver came out on November 1st. This is like uh, 310 to Yuma, but fantasy. Uh, a lot of people are liking this book so far, so I hope you'll check it out and make sure you're on my list, dvspress.com slash list. You'll get a free book and you'll be able to gain a little bit of early access to my next book, which should be coming out in early December, which is a straightforward horror book. So thanks so much. And I'll see you guys next time.